Bühler Motor Fractional Horsepower DC Motors Application Engineering Hello, my name is Gerhard Hofmann. In the previous sessions I explained in detail how a permanent magnet DC motor with its specific working behavior may be adjusted to the load conditions in an application and how the performance of the motor changes with varying operation conditions. This last part now addresses the behavior of the drives over a dedicated period of time. Operating life is an important part of the specification. It has to be considered that the power requirements from the application must be met over the total time of operation. The operating life of an electrical drive system is defined by the time in which the units meet the specification. Some of the performance data are changing their values continuously during operation until the specification limits are reached. Reaching a specification limit would mean the end of operating life for the drive unit. Besides of the continuous wear condition, there is also the possibility of a sudden failure, which means an immediate malfunction. The life requirement is part of the specification and may vary from a few hours up to more than 10,000 hours depending on the application. As mentioned before, the exceedance of the specification limits may be due to gradual changes of the motor performance as well as by sudden impacts. Operating life of a drive unit is depending on various factors. Even motors from the same family may present a difference in operating life up to 10 times greater only because of the different operating conditions. Definitions for operating life in specifications ought to describe the real operation conditions in the application as adequate as possible. In many cases the total operating life reaches several years. For distinct provision of evidence the life test would also last several years, which is normally not possible. In those cases, a reasonable definition has to be made how the time could be shortened without a significant impact on the operating conditions. So-called rapid tests, which are tests with overload, are usually not possible. In applications with long periods of no operation, the off time of the duty cycle may be shortened without influencing the stress for the drive unit. This will decrease the total test time significantly. To reproduce the real application conditions for the life test as precise as possible, the specified loads and the environmental conditions have to be simulated as close as possible. Therefore, it may be reasonable to use components from the real application. In cases where this is not possible, a test fixture is necessary to simulate the application conditions. It has to be pointed out that the test fixtures for simulated life tests are a cost factor that cannot be neglected. Also the timeline has to be considered during the project phase. Especially for brush motors, it is important to execute the number of required motor starts within the total running time. With each motor start, the motor sees starting current if the power supplies allows. This is much harder than a continuous running. Another significant influence to the operating life of the products may be the electrical control during the test. If possible, the original electronics from the customer should be used. Looking at brush motors now. 
operating life of brush commutated motors is normally determined by the brush wear. Only in cases of excessive bearing load, the bearing may be the limiting factor. In this case, also brushless motors would not be of advantage. Brushes wear during the motor operation until they are gone completely or are not able to make a firm contact to the commutator any longer. Total brush wear is a combination of mechanical wear and electrical wear. The mechanical wear is significantly lower than the electrical wear. The wear rate of the brushes is the indicator for the motor life. It tells how much the brush is worn after a certain time. Together with the knowledge of the length of the brush, the total running time can be calculated. Wear rates between 0.1 and 1.0 mm per 100 hours are typical for the size of motors we are dealing with. The wear rate is determined by the brush composition and the application conditions such as speed, current, voltage, temperature, humidity, duty cycle and so on. As we talk about existing motors when we do application engineering, the motor design is given and the operating life is depending on the length of the brush. A quick look at the cross section of the motor shows the brush lengths are within the motor design, other elements are the housing diameter D, the commutator diameter DC and the shaft diameter DS. All these elements together with the used spring design determine the possible length of the brush in the system. We have seen that the geometric length of the brush is determined by the motor construction. The brush wear on the other hand side is determined by the application conditions. Main impact on the brush wear has the operational speed of the motor, the force of the brush spring and the current draw of the motor. All this is exposed to the environmental conditions in the commutation area. If we look at the contact area between the brush and the commutator a little closer, we need to focus on the film that builds up during the motor application. This film is called patina and is basically responsible for the brush life of the motor. The building of the patina is a very complex electrochemical process with various process parameters that influence the result. Nevertheless, it is essential for a low wear rate of the brush. Here is an example for a good patina. Again, the building of such a good patina is depending on various impacts, which will be discussed next. At first, we look at the design and map mechanical impacts. The brush cross section A, which is width T multiplied by the brush height A, It is determined by the motor design. The selection of brush composition mainly defined by the ratio of carbon and copper is something that can be done using experience from former life tests or expertise from the brush manufacturers like a company Schunk. They show comprehensive information on their website too. Brush pressure onto the commutator is a design-related aspect with the aim to have a very flat spring constant in order to realize nearly constant force over the whole brush travel. 
Looking at the brush pressure a little closer, we see nonlinear relationships between brush pressure and brush wear. There is electrical wear decreasing with pressure. There is mechanical wear increasing with pressure. And the total wear curve showing a minimum at a certain pressure. This minimum is around a brush pressure of 5 newtons per centimeter square. The commutator as the second partner needs to have a certain quality in its surface. This quality is reached by a turning process after the armature is fully assembled. First criterion on the commutator is roundness. It should be less than 0 0.005 millimeters. Next is runout, which should be less than 0 0.02 millimeters. Roughness is the third criterion, and it should have a value of RC2 to 5. Bar-to-bar -bar step is the last quality criterion for commutators. And it should be less or equal 0 0.001 mm. All these quality aspects on the commutator surface have an influence on the brush wear. Additionally, they have an impact on audible noise and electrical noise. Consequently, it's very important to meet the requirements in order to have a good motor with long life. Electrical and environmental impacts are usually given by the application and are not negotiable. The current density, which is load current I sub L divided by the brush cross section A, and this should be less or equal 25 amps per square centimeter. The motor speed, N sub L, has a linear impact on the wear rate, but it is given by the application. Environmental impacts are also given by the application and cannot be changed. Temperature and humidity show a nonlinear relationship, which means too cold and too hot is bad, as well as too dry and too wet. As the climate usually is as it is, in the application it just has to be accepted, knowing the impacts on the brushware. Any contamination must be avoided by all means. Valid for brush and brushless motors is the bearing situation in the motor. Bearings may be the limiting factor for brush motors if the side loads in the applications are high. Belt drives may be an example for this. On brushless motors, the bearings are mostly the life-limiting factor. For brushless motors, the electronics may be the life-limiting factor. Electronic components have MTTF, which is mean time to failure, values, which must be considered for a live estimation. Life estimation on gear motors has to be split into the gear and the motor part. Either the motor or the gearbox may be the limiting component. For low gear ratios, less than 10 to 1, the motor is mostly the limiting component, if it's a brush motor. Brushless motors typically survive the gearbox.
In general, the life of the selected drive for a specific application is very hard to predict. In most cases, a test under real application conditions is necessary. The test conditions must simulate the real application conditions.